Hey guys, welcome back to VBA A to Z. I'm Long Pomai and in this video, I'll be showing you step by step on how to automate sending an email with and without VBA program using Outlook. We'll also explore ways to create dynamic and responsive mobile friendly content or template. And I'll also share some tips and tricks from my experience. A few years ago, I've done a detailed tutorial on how to send email using VBA without Outlook, but by using any providers like Gmail, Yahoo, or Microsoft. I'll leave a link in the video description. Please feel free to check it out in case you missed it. As always, project files and source codes are free for download and use. The only request from you is to support my channel so I can keep sharing all these useful videos. So before we begin, please do not forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon for upcoming videos. First, let me take a couple of minutes to show you how to link uh, Outlook to your Gmail or Microsoft account. So from your Outlook, go to File Options. And then in here, I'm using Office 365, but it should be very similar for you as well. Click on add account. So this is where you'll put in your email ID. Let's say, you know, and then once you click on connect, it will ask you for a password. Put in your password and click on connect. Uh, if it doesn't work, uh, make sure to go and enable the IMAP settings. For example, if you go to your Microsoft uh, mailbox from the options, you look for in the sync uh, email option, you will scroll down, you'll see a uh, pop and IMAP. Just make sure that this is enabled. Click on yes. And then uh, these are some of the you know, like configuration that you can use. But uh, don't worry, those will already be pre-filled. But if it does not, these are the port and some of the encryption method that you can fill up in your settings. Okay. So similarly, in your Gmail, uh, go to Gmail and then go to your settings. From here, click on forwarding and pop slash IMAP. Just make sure you enable the pop here and then the IMAP. Okay. Pop might not be necessary, uh, but uh, you know, just try it out and click on enable IMAP as well. And once you're done, click on save changes. Now, if you need more information, uh, click on configuration instructions. So this will give you some more additional information. But again, this would probably be already pre-filled once you click on connect. Okay. Now let me quickly show you a way to draft an email without using VBA. So here you can see um, the HTML mail to uh, function. And then these are the parameters and the description. So it's simple, like you have mail to CC, BCC, subject here, and then um, the body of the email. And then these are the uh, delimiter, you know, like for the first parameter. And then this is for other delimiters. Okay. If we have to use this um, along with our Excel hyperlink function, what you can do is uh, let's quickly demonstrate one example. So here mail to, and then here is where your to email will go to. So let's say I'm sending email to alpamai at, uh, let's say, outlook.com. And if you have more email ID, you can separate them with, uh, you know, like this uh, semicolon. And then you can put in your, for example, something like this. Okay. So once your all the two email ID has been configured, you start uh, you first, you know, like a parameter for delimiter is question mark like this. Then here you'll say CC then equal to here you'll put in the cc id okay so let's say this is sample id and then now the delimiter is going to be this for the rest of them here we'll say bcc is equal to let's say another sample okay and then the body I'm gonna put this let's say in a body we'll say uh this is we can also add a subject. This is body's email body sample. Here we'll add a subject as well. This is sample subject, something like this. Okay, so if I copy this to our Excel sheet here, so this is the sample data that we'll be using later. Now, if we have to use this, we'll have to include with the hyperlink function. So hyperlink, and then instead of putting the link, we're going to put this, okay? The string that we constructed now. And then in a friendly name, you can put a send email, something like this. When I click on this, um, we are expecting the email to be drafted. Yeah. From is automatically added. And then here is two email ID that we added into. And then this is sample CC email ID. And then the email ID that goes in BCC. 
this is a subject line and then this is the email body now, now coming back here let's say that you want to add um, a new line you can add in this fashion I'll show you here you can say hi let's say Pamai and then after that let's say you want to add a new line you put percentage this is zero and this is a okay say this and then after new line we'll say please share the data something like that so let's see if it works so you have that in you know like second line this also can be concatenated with other cells here instead of this we can also concatenate it with the first name here like this okay hi Nathaniel and please share the data and there are limitations as well that I'll quickly tell you and then after new line we'll say thanks and then new line again and then here I'll say oh my something like this okay so this is how you can add new lines and then you can draft your you know like uh, create your email again this can be also be referenced to cells okay the limitation here is you can configure from email ID as well as you cannot specify too many contents within the email. It has a limitation of around, I think, 2,000 characters. So you'll come across some of the limitations here. But if you need something quick and fast, uh, it's good to know function, okay? So here are two functions that we use it from our prior videos regarding C using CDO to send email without Outlook and this is very handy feature you know like a function that you can include in your code this one is basically just to read uh, the content from the file okay so let's say that the file is HTML it will read whatever is within that HTML file and then we can use that in our email body for example this is basically just to publish whatever range that you pass here as a parameter it will publish that particular range into an HTML file okay before we can start writing the code, go to your tools references and um, activate this uh, Microsoft Outlook 16.0 object library. Just check this box. We're going to use early binding so that we can, you know, like uh, directly see the methods and procedures okay, associated with that. We'll just call this send email and then VBA. First, let's declare and set up the uh, Outlook. We'll say Outlook application as Outlook application and then uh, Outlook mail as uh, Outlook dot sorry mail item okay now let me quickly clear the memory as well okay so now we have declared, uh, let's do this, so we don't have to set it up again. Now we can say that uh, set up the our email as, um, so this app, we'll use this app, we'll create an item and in this item we'll create a mail item. So you can create, you know, like contact, appointment, distribution item and so on. So for now we'll just create a mail item, okay? we can start utilizing this um, object so with this mail item let's say you want to add two you can say two and then you can dot cc dot bcc dot you want to add an attachment um, you can also say recipients if there are recipients you want to resolve them you know, if there are you can also input by username instead of putting it uh, the full email ID if you're working within a company you can also do that and then if you use this you can resolve the username to the full email ID for example and then body and then you can close and then within close you can save the item as well so in two you'll just say this is where you'll specify um, email ID for example like this or you can also say 
could be from a range, right? Let's say that we are sending email to Natal, so we'll say D2. We'll just put a static value now. Something like this. And then BCC will just put another email ID, maybe. BCC sample. Oops. Something like this. And here in attachment, you can add uh, maybe this image. So this workbook. And then here we'll put it inside the ICO folder. Okay, in this folder in the same part, like this. And then um, we'll just disable this for now because there's nothing to resolve. And then in the body, you can specify hide this. We're sending email. Okay, let's say hypermaya as an example. Um, and then VB new line. This could be just this is just to add a new line to the string. And then we'll say please share the data. Thanks. And then here could be Peter is sending email. And then we can also include the subject line dot. This is sample subject, something like that. Okay, so let's try to send this now. Run this code. Now going to my Outlook, this is sample email. Let me open this. So this is attachment. This is you know like the CC that we picked up from the Excel range here and then this is the hard-coded you know like two and then and so on okay so now let's say that you want to send it on behalf of the group or something like that then you can use this feature this so if you have access to their mailbox you should be able to send let's say this is called group uh, mailbox of HR or something like that and then like this Okay, so this is how you can use a group as well. Now that was drafting the email. Let's say we want to send it now instead of drafting. So just write dot send. Okay, so this will automatically send automatically send data to uh, email to all this you know like configuration. So let's try this again. I should get a non-deliver you know like a message. So if I go to my send item, still sending down there. You can see now. And so I'm opening it. If you see here, this is the e my email ID, and then this is sending on behalf of group mailbox HR gmail.com. So for example, so this is the body, and then this is to BCC and, and so on. Okay. I should have received it by now. So this is you know it says email was not delivered. That's because I'm sending with the you know like sample email ID. So I'm gonna disable this for now. So okay, so this is a uh, very easy way now this is um, this is how you're gonna control Outlook from your Excel or from anywhere you can write this same code within Outlook as well okay now instead of using the static email body let's explore multiple ways on how to you know, like use the HTML body you don't need to know HTML at all to, to accomplish this but I'll also walk you through some resources in in just some time so going uh, let me quickly show you this um, sample so if you look here you already know how to set up this the invoice this could be dynamically all this could be dynamically set up if you look here this is uh, some of the wordings here the name the invoice ID some of the dates here could be dynamic this table here can be dynamically set up and then again this line of text the hyperlink is there the image is there and then this is the email signature right so let's try to create something like this. Now going back to Excel, let me create a new tab. 
So um, instead of rewriting the whole thing, let me copy this and paste it as a, as a text. And then let me take the table from here. For the sake of demonstration, let me do it like this. Okay. Now we could bring this down to the next line like this. Let's say that this is the email that we have to send it to clients. Okay, so now you can construct this string dynamically and then all this as well dynamically and then this table as well when it is in your Excel. It's very simple to do that. So if your table is going to be dynamic, sometimes it's going to row is going to increase or decrease, you could have this somewhere else, maybe somewhere here like this. And then after this table is being constructed, you can copy this down here wherever the table ends. Okay, that's how you can achieve this. Now, when you have this set up, um, you can tell the the converter that, uh, that we checked earlier. So range to HTML, you can run this code to convert this particular range. So if to demonstrate this, let me create a small sub procedure. I'll just call this test and then this. And then I'll call this on the selected range okay in this range so if i run this now it's going to convert this selection to the html file in this temp folder okay so i'm going to run this now it's done so if i go to my temp folder you'll see here is the html file that is just converted so i'll open this this is the email basically the html file content okay I'm going to close this and I'm going to point, um, I'm going to take this part just for now, like this, the static part. Coming back to the code, so this, this particular code again is going to basically read whatever is in that particular file, inside the file. So if I just write this, if I run this code manually like this, It's going to return whatever is in that file like this, okay? So let's give it a shot. Okay, I lost the file, but anyways, coming back here, instead of this HTML body, which is static, uh, I'm going to say dot HTML body. Instead of the static one, we're just going to use HTML body. And then here, I'm going to say read from this particular file. let's try it out now if I run this it will you know like take the the content of this HTML and then put it in the email body okay let's just run it so we'll just create the drafts it's done going back to the drafts and then this is the new email ID uh, the email drafted so here you can see all the informations are still intact and this is coming if you select this you see that the entire email body is coming from some sort of a table if you see here okay so this is how you can draft your email obviously you can make this longer depending on how you want to set it up now this is very easy to set it up um, again if you have to do this on runtime then um, first your code could update this high Peter you know like and then the invoice ID and then the date and so on and then it will copy the the table from somewhere within your Excel and paste it here and then update all the string and then publish the HTML import it to your outlook here uh, 
your HTML body, you know, like go through this, and then once it is done, you can run a code to delete this particular file using kill kill function. Okay, kill function is basically just to delete the file, or you could just have this here because once the read is complete, which is here, then you can just delete the file, okay? Like this. So that's one way to do it. Sending, uh, creating the HTML body, okay? Now coming back to our table. So let's say that we want to loop through all this and then create a email for all these um, clients based on this invoice, we'll create a subject and then we'll specify the amount due and and so on okay so let's try let's try that so we'll reuse the same code here let me get rid of this for now um while we are doing this let's do one more example this uh you already know now that you can run this to uh, to export it to HTML or create a HTML file and then this is to read the HTML. Now let's say that you want to create a new um, template. Let's create a new template. And let's say that this one does not have um, a table like this. And then uh, we'll write a code to update specific, you know, like items within the email body. Okay. So in order to do that, normally how I do it is I put a variable names like this, VBA first name. It could be anything, but make sure that that particular variable that you put in here does not conflict with uh, the wordings or the data that you're gonna add. So here, you know, like this is gonna be replaced using a VBA on runtime, and then this is gonna be Oops. Here we'll put in invoice number. So let's say um I hold on reminding that this was sent on this which will be due on this for amount USD and then you put in amount. Let's say this is VB amount. So now since you already got the idea, I'm not going to change the date for now, so that it's faster. Okay, so once you create the variable names like this, you save your uh, Word documents first. I'll just call this template one. And then I'm going to resave the same file to HTML. The web page okay so I'm gonna close this now go back to my folder and then here you'll see temp one so if I just open this file now you'll see that this is a basic HTML file with some of the you know like variable names within the text within the string so these are some of the strings we'll replace by running the macro okay I'm gonna close this going back to the code so here, instead of uh, reading it from the temp file, now we'll read it from our file, that the template that we created. Or this could be dynamic again like this. Or if you don't want to, um, we could just if we're gonna do this for multiple items, I think we should not reopen it all the time. Uh, let's write the loop first. So I'll say dim row index as long. So this will hold the row number dynamically. So that it'll keep looping down like this, one by one, like this. 
and then we'll look from row number 2 till 49 okay and some of the variables that we'll need is first name invoice number and the due amount for example I'm gonna copy this to our code okay Them. this will be string so this represents string and then this is going to be double or long um, you can say this as double like this so this two will be string and then this is going to be double data type now here we can say that uh, the client's worksheet name is cltsh so we can see here that this dot cells and the first name is in column one and the invoice number is in thirteen and the due amount is in fourteen. So let's try for this one. So these are going to be our variable values assigned dynamically on runtime. Now we're going to copy this part within this. Now let's say that we want to run only when the status is pending. So 16. So we'll say if this particular value is pending that's when we want to run the code okay so hopefully this is now again we we can also set up the email id to make it more realistic let me just copy this Now the email ID is going to be set as well. So this is in fourth, you can see down here, it's fourth column. So in two, instead of this static, I'll just put in, this is going to be the email ID. And then for now, I'm just going to get rid of this, no attachment. And this subject line, subject line we can set it up again dynamically. Let's call this and this can be um, the invoice number here like this and then the body will come to that in a moment so now we've set up all the variables and instead of simply just reading this HTML, we want to replace the content. But then we, since this is just a single particular template, we don't want to keep reopening that, getting the content from there and closing it. So instead of that, we'll say uh, HTML content, or let's call this template content HTML as string or you can just leave it as variant that's okay and here we'll just pull in this one time only okay we'll see here we're reading the content here okay so this is gonna be holding whatever is inside this particular template here okay now once this is open we want to once it reaches here based on whatever variables are here we want to replace the values that we have set it up so here we'll say um, 
it's going to be this one but uh, we'll replace the values so let's write a, a quick function again to do this we'll just say content and then uh, we'll say that this equal to or we'll just create a new variable temp1 as string and then here we'll just write a replace function let me open this template once more get the variable names so first we want to replace the username with whatever name is passed and then second is the invoice number and then the amount so if you have more variables you can keep on you know like doing the similar activity here and we'll specify here what we want to replace okay so this is the first name and then this is going to be the invoice number and then this is going to be the amount amount will replace this with invoice this is going to be the first name again all this could be string like this and then once we're done replacing we'll pass it back and I will read uh, we'll just call this update variables yeah okay so let's give it a shot I'll copy this code here and every time it runs this particular content that we read from this particular file that I need to change Give me one second. We'll just go through it very quickly again. Okay. This is an HTML and then this is the file. So let's quickly have a look at this code. Here we're reading the content from this HTML file. And we're starting to loop from row number two till 49 dynamically assigning what should be the first name the invoice number amount and so on and then coming down here if the status is pending then we're setting up a new uh, mail item and then assigning all the you know like email information and then here we are updating whatever is being read up here from the template we're updating it with these values that we created and then it will create email and then just save it as a draft let's see if this is working let's try to run it only for a couple of them so here we need to pass additional parameters the first name the invoice and then the amount let's like this okay so let's see if this is working uh, the amount could be formatted actually because it might, not, it might not look good if we don't format it let's say that we want to use this same format come down here We'll just apply a format to this amount okay so let's try and run this I'm gonna clear all the draft
I'm going to change this. Actually, this is wrong reference. So the status is in column 16. Let's try to run this again. This file is not found. Okay, this is supposed to be HTML, not HTM. That's my bad. Let's try again. Uh, HTML and then this dot HTM. And just take the full path instead of trying to resolve this. F5. So here, three emails have been drafted. Okay, this is the wrong email. Sorry, it's wrong template reference. Looks like the file got deleted. And come back here. Okay, I'm gonna. Luckily, now we have this file saved earlier. I'm gonna save this as again to HTML. Okay, let's see. I just press F5. One way to draw. So you can see the invoice has been automatically, you know, like set the email, the name, the email ID dynamically set, and then all this amount, as you can see, has been already replaced. From there's a small problem with the formatting that can be corrected. Okay, so this this is how you can, you know, like. Um, create you know, like email body content again dynamically using one template and then replacing all the you know like required items within um, the email body so before we wind up let me quickly also show you some of the resources that i came across which are very useful so first is this um crypto dot email um, if you go here you'll see that um, they have a pretty good base of templates as well so if you open any of this template, let's say um, back to school. Now the very good thing is here they have tools which lets you you know like draft email like this, and then you can preview how it's gonna look like in in a computer in a desktop and then in a in a in a phone as well like this. Okay, so this is what I like about this this particular online tool. And the other good thing here is um, you can take the code. Like the code editor is here. Once you click on it, it will show you the entire code that is used within this particular, you know, like uh, content or page. So if you just select all, I'm just doing a right click, and copy this, and now we can just create our. HTML. So let's say um, back to school. Dot HTM. Now I'm gonna just open this in Notepad, or in a Notepad plus plus. Okay, let's save this. Yes. And let's see if it works. So I'm opening it from my desktop now. You can see the URL here is from my desktop. So it's pretty cool. Now you can use VBA to update some of the variables here, maybe the amount, the link, and so on. Okay. I'm gonna close this. Now the next one is as always, you know, like w3schools.com. This is where I find lots of these simplified contents that you don't need to go too deep into it, but it gives you a, you know like some idea to quickly get started. And then they have the editor to play around by yourself. So one thing I came across here is, let's say that you have no idea about HTML and CSS. This is the code that you can simply copy it. And then this is how you can link to the, you know, like the style sheet, uh, CSS file, okay? Uh, so this table, 
creator you know like you can create a table and then the body and then the header and so on you can customize it in this fashion and then this is the HTML code it automatically generates and then this is the CSS code so this CSS will be you know like based on the style that you select here okay so once you have this if you want to use for example uh, let's say we have a table that has three rows of data and then three columns so here you can see these are the columns it's a bit tiny but uh, you get an idea now on runtime what you can construct once you have this code you can construct just this particular part of the HTML and then include it with the you know like uh, the main HTML so this is how you can you know like play around with creating uh, email body with HTML content as well okay and then again further to play around with this this particular HTML editor again here you can uh, create uh, all this HTML uh, thingy and once you're done you can click on source and then you are able to get the HTML code of it okay so you don't need to know HTML but you can generate HTML code then here you can insert tables as well image hyperlink and then you uh, you can also specify the font I came across many of the editors which does not have the font it must be very easy to set it up but then for people who don't know HTML it's it's very uh, you know like easy to construct using this so I'll leave the link uh, all these links in the video description so that you can also play around and you know like um, if you have any questions again please feel free to comment on the video below and we'll discuss more I'll try to come back to you as soon as possible okay so that's all I have for you um, if you found the video informative please leave a like and subscribe to our channel for upcoming videos I'll see you in the next video bye bye